G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, and in today's video, we are going to be doing my official 2021 ladder prediction. Now, the footy season is just around the corner. We're a few short weeks away, and in an ideal world, I would be doing this video after the JLT or whatever it's called now. I mean, the JLT doesn't mean all that much, but it does give you a bit of insight into which young players might be able to take the next step. There's usually always a couple of injuries going on in the preseason games as well, which is always worth taking note of. But this year, I'm impatient because your boy needs views. So I'm doing my 2021 ladder prediction today in this video. I did one back in December and I guess what's changed is had a bit more time to stew over the off-season moves but also I did take into consideration the fixture in this one. So I used the squiggle ladder predictor and I'll take you through the 18 teams from 18th to 1st in ascending order and then you guys in the comments can let me know just how wrong I got it. Before we get into it, I would like to acknowledge our sponsor for today's video, Manscaped.com. If you go to their website, you can get 20% off their premium bulk shaving products using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. It's 2021, we're all manscaping by now, there's no need to hide it. You might as well get the best quality products on offer and through their partnership with TrueFooty, you can get a great value discount. Shout out to Manscaped for getting us through an off season with very, very limited AdSense. They have been a huge supporter of the channel so far. But without further ado, let's get into the ladder. First up, I have to say the Adelaide Crows are gonna go back to back with wooden spoons. And I guess the difference between them and the other rebuilding sides around this region are the fact that their kids are just a little bit more raw, a little bit less developed than some of the teams I have ahead of them. They've got the youngest list statistically, they're the second least experienced list in the league. And while they did end the year last year with some momentum, which is a really, really positive sign, they're sort of building cohesiveness. I do also think that Matthew Nix as a new coach is going to continue to be very, very patient and give the kids the opportunity and which will result in, as far as I'm concerned, less wins. In second last spot, I've got North Melbourne, who are, of course, under new coach David Noble and are undergoing a bit of a hardcore rebuild. Now, to contrast the Crows, I think North have been rebuilding a little bit longer and thus their kids have a little bit more experience. So I do think they'll probably be able to snatch a few more wins. I know that North have a bold three-year plan to get into the top four. Regardless, though, I think they're going to take this year to rebuild properly and properly give the kids the games they need to develop. Now, we know with their off-season moves, they lost a fair bit of experience with Ben Brown and Sean Higgins exiting the club. And I do think that David Noble, despite having a three-year plan, is going to take this year to be patient and properly test the list. In 16th spot, we've got the Hawthorne Footy Club, and unfortunately, the rebuild they so desperately wanted to avoid is definitely well and truly here. On paper, the list is still relatively experienced, but I think the need for them to add elite young talent to their list is still very clear. We know they've drafted heavy in the last couple of years with someone like Denver Granger Barras joining the club as a very high draft pick last year. As such, I think Hawthorne are gonna to continue to give games to the younger parts of their list. And while they're definitely good enough to catch a few teams napping this year and steal just enough wins to avoid the bottom two, I think especially without Sicily, who's done an ACL at the end of 2020, I think the stability is gonna go a little bit and I think they're gonna find it very hard to avoid the bottom four. So Hawthorne in 16. Rounding out the bottom four, an unpopular choice perhaps, but I've gone with the Gold Coast Suns on the basis that while their list has a lot of elite young talent, it's still very, very raw. Now at one point early in the season last year when they belted West Coast and Adelaide back to back and then beat Fremantle as well, it looked like they were a sneaky chance to play finals. But if you look at their season after round up five, they really, really ran out of steam. No, it's not because Matthew Rao got injured, although he was playing sensational football for them. The fact of the matter is they're just a young side and they're going to run out of steam over the course of the season. There's a lot of demand on those younger players. You factor in again that this is a longer season and as it stands now, they're going to have to travel more than they did in 2020. I do think the Suns probably will dwindle as the season goes on just enough to finish in the bottom four and I think they're still a year or two away from really pushing finals. In 14th spot, just avoiding the bottom four, I've got the Sydney Swans. Again, another side that's been rebuilding for a couple of years now, but the difference is they've got someone called Buddy Franklin on their list. Now, do we bet on Buddy Franklin even playing a game this year? I'm not sure if I'm that confident, but you also got the upside of someone like Isaac Heaney coming back into the side who they barely got footy out of last year. I think they're a little bit further along in their rebuild than some of the teams that I've already mentioned, and in particular, the young quality on that list is really, really strong. But I do also think we have to factor in they've just drafted Dylan Stevens, Logan McDonald, Braden Campbell as well. Guys, they're gonna need to give opportunities early too. I think they're just young enough as a collective to not really quite push finals, but with someone like Buddy Franklin who can win games off his own boot, they'll jag enough to avoid the bottom four. They're pretty much at the end of their rebuild. They've added a lot of really strong young talent. 
They're a bit of a wild card, but I've got them in 14. In 13th spot, I've got Essendon, and this was a side I kind of defended over the offseason because they were talked about a lot for going into a rebuild, having lost three important players. And I sort of counter-argued that I didn't quite think they were entering a rebuild. I think they've been in one for a few years now. Of the best 22 players they've lost, probably only Adam Saad out of that trio really, really takes away from their best 22 in the here and now. And they've sort of supplemented their list with some young guys like Jai Caldwell and Peter Wright, who are important going forward. That being said, despite all that, I think Essendon are consistently inconsistent. It's really, really hard to bet on them really pushing finals with any confidence. What I will say is that they're the first team I've mentioned out of the group so far who I think can play finals. In 12th spot, another unpopular choice here, but I'm gonna bet on the Bulldogs sliding out of the finals and having an absolute stinker. I'm not really saying this because I don't rate them. I do rate the overall quality of the list, although I have argued against the fact that adding someone like Adam Trelaw is really gonna take them to the next level in 2021. Adding someone like Stefan Martin to support Tim English was probably a good move in the ruck there, and arguably it's probably an overdue move, but I do think the Dogs are gonna have issues juggling all their midfield talent this year. Adam Trelaw comes in, does that means someone like a Marcus Bontempelli has to play forward. Is that really the best use of his elite talents? I'm not sure. They'll definitely be praying someone like Aaron Norton has a good run with injury this year, who's a little bit underdone last year. I think overall avenues to goal is going to be the problem for the Dogs, and I think they're a top eight quality side, but they're my bet to slide out of the eight in 2021. In 11th spot, I've got the Freeman on Dockers, and I have to say they're probably a side that's been made to look a little bit worse than they really are due to extensive injuries over the last few years. That being said, it may be positive overall because it may have helped them accelerate a little bit of a rebuild. Fully fit, they've got a great back line with Hamling, Pierce, and now Luke Ryan all playing very, very high level footy on their day. And their midfield, which was previously a bit top heavy, has sort of added that extra layer with Brayshaw, Chera, and Sarong really coming on last year. They gave up on the Jesse Hogan experiment pretty quickly, and as such, I think their forward line avenues are going to be a real problem for them going forward. That being said, they're still good enough to challenge a few teams and be a tricky opponent in 2021. In 10th spot, I've got the GWS Giants, who by now must be pretty used to bleeding elite talent. Although this year, I think it might have been a bridge too far with Jeremy Cameron and Zach Williams, both very important players exiting the club. Jeremy Cameron's obviously on top of being an elite player, really important for them structurally. And I think that now puts a lot of pressure on Jeremy Finn Layson, Jake Riccardi, and maybe Jesse Hogan as well to establish a good frontline trio. So reliable avenues to go will be a problem for the Giants this year, in my opinion. And the fact that morale must be pretty low after a pretty listless end to last year. I think they're a very, very good side, potentially top four to six quality, but I just have them missing the finals this year. In nine spot, truly missing the finals, I've got Carlton. And with all the optimism going into this year for Carlton fans, they're gonna look at this and think that is probably a bit harsh. They had a great off season, adding two really important defensive key pieces with Zach Williams and Adam Saad, adding a lot of rebound to that side. That and plus the fact that they've been drafting pretty good talent over the last few years, and you're bound to get some natural progression over some of those young guys. For me though, the simple response to that is I just don't see their team being good enough in the here and now to be better than some of the teams I'm about to mention as well. They're definitely a finals contender. They're going to be a tricky opponent for many teams this year, but I do think they're probably just one more year away from being a serious team. In eighth spot, just sliding into the finals, I've got the Melbourne Demons, who are notoriously a very, very hard team to pick. I think the reason for that, other than the fact that they're a real Jekyll and Hyde side, is that while they have immense individual star power, the cohesiveness of that team and the overall execution and reliability has not been there for a couple of years now. I mean, individually, you've got some very, very elite players there. You've got Christian Petrarca, who announced himself as a superstar last year. Max Gorn kind of regained some of the form that we've seen in previous years. And even someone like Clayton Oliver has a lot of upside in that midfield. They've recruited fairly well in recent years, and I think they've got a bit of a bargain with Ben Brown. It's just gonna be about how well that team comes together talent-wise. And someone like Zyman Goodwin is under a lot of pressure this year. For me, I think it's finals or bust but I've got him sliding into eighth spot. In seventh spot, I've got the St. Kilda Footy Club. And again, their fans are probably going to think this is underrating them. And to be fair, it is very hard to make a case for St. Kilda not improving in 2021. They've got a very, very young list. I think the youngest from all the finalists, if I'm not mistaken, last year. And they not only made the finals, but they won a final. On top of that, they've added someone like Brad Crouch and Jack Higgins, two guys right in that right age demographic for their list. And in particular, I think the midfield was somewhere they needed to bolster. Heaps of their best 22 are young and still improving. Guys like Nick Caulfield and Hunter Clark come to mind immediately. And someone like Max King, as he develops, will be a very exciting talent to watch in 2021. For me, similar to Carlton, I just think the teams that I'm gonna name ahead of St. Kilda are a little bit more battle-hardened. And that's why I'm a little bit more confident of them finishing higher. 
but the Saints could definitely finish as high as the top four. In sixth spot, I have my beloved West Coast Eagles. You can definitely make the argument there is a lot of upside for the Eagles. If you look at 2020, they had a really bad injury run and to be honest, had to hub in Queensland where they notoriously play terrible football. So just by virtue of the fact that there won't be as many games in Queensland under lights, West Coast should have it a little bit more their way in 2021. That being said, I think there's a lot of key issues for the Eagles, particularly around their game plan and their midfield. It's quite concerning to me that Nat Nui was our best player last year in the ruck, an absolute dominant season. Tim Kelly was recruited and played pretty good football, and yet our midfield was by far our worst line. Now, I don't wanna sell my boys short. I think 2020 wasn't a great reflection on how good they can be. I think they can win the flag, but I'm not going to bet on it. I think they're going to finish similar to where they did in the last couple of years, and I'm just praying that I'm wrong. In fifth spot, I've got the Port Adelaide Footy Club, who surprised just about everyone last year to not only make the finals, but finish on top of the ladder and make it to a prelim. Again, I don't really have too many strong arguments for why the power might slide out of the top four, I guess, other than the fact that Travis Boak has been one of their best players for such a long time, and he's approaching the twilight years of his career. It was evident last year that one of the biggest pluses for Port Adelaide was structurally with Charlie Dixon really taking his game to the next level, and he's such an absolute monster that so many opposition defenders really struggle to make a matchup for him. But for me, I guess out of the top four of last year, Port are the strongest candidate to slide out of it. I guess over the last few years, they've been the inconsistent one out of the group that I've mentioned there. That being said, they're well and truly in the flag hunt and I wouldn't be surprised if they finish top two. In fourth spot, this is a team that I think you guys will think is a bit of a stinky selection from me. I've got Collingwood defying the odds and making the top four. Now Collingwood have been in the media for all the wrong reasons since the footy season ended. Firstly, with their horrible trade period by most accounts. And then of course, everything with Eddie Maguire over the last few weeks. We saw them do a huge salary and experience dump over the off season, which saw them release Adam Trelaw, Jaden Stevenson, and Tom Phillips from their list. Not only is that a bit of a blow to their depth, but experience-wise as well, they've gone from being the oldest list to just about middle of the pack. But I think people are forgetting they were injury ravaged in 2020, and their midfield in particular has a lot of elite talent. Look, you can certainly make the argument that the PR nightmare could rock the club, and they could lose stability and completely shit the bed. Who knows? I can't really bet on that. I'm just going to call it as I see it based on the talent they've got. I think other than a big tall key target, which they would ideally love to have added last year, I think the side is so strong and they can definitely surprise people and go deep in finals. In third spot, I've got last year's grand finalist, the Geelong Footy Club. And to be honest, it's hard to imagine a team that's ever been as all in for a premiership title as this team. I think by virtue of the fact that they're one of the oldest and experienced lists, people do tend to count against them at this time every year, and generally they prove us wrong. In 2019, they lost one of their best players in Tim Kelly to West Coast, and then they went one step further and made the grand final. They've added Jeremy Cameron, which means they now had the last two years of Coleman medalists, and they've also added Isaac Smith and Sean Higgins, and it's really hard to make a case for them not improving. That being said, I know that a team is not always the sum of all its parts, and in particular that forward line mix getting Hawkins and Cameron to work in the same forward line will be a challenge, but if they can get it working, they're going to be unstoppable. In second spot, I've got the Richmond Footy Club, and similar to the Hawks about four or five years ago, the Tigers are pretty much the best team until proven otherwise. In terms of their actual list, not a lot happened for them in the offseason. They got rid of Jack Higgins, and Oleg Markov made his way to Gold Coast, but other than that, the team is fairly stable. And as far as I'm concerned, the only thing that's really going to threaten a third premiership in a row is the lack of hunger and drive. But from everything I've seen from this Richmond footy club, they don't really lack in either of those departments. Now, second spot might be putting them a little bit high because we've seen in the past, they don't really place a lot of emphasis on their home and away finish. In fact, their favorite position to finish is in third spot and they do tend to lose a lot of gimme games. That being said, regardless, Richmond are right in the thick of the premiership race. Finally, there's one team left and I'm gonna nominate the Brisbane Lions as my 2021 minor premier. The scary thing about Brisbane is that they finished top two in the previous two seasons and so much of their elite quality is still quite young. In particular, they've got an All-Australian key defender and a Brownlow medalist running through their midfield and both of these guys are still in the prime of their career. In terms of off-season moves, we know they bolstered their forward line, adding Joe Danaher, who we know on his day can be an elite talent, but even if he doesn't recapture that form of about three years ago, he at least adds a little bit of a foil, a bit of support to someone like Eric Hipwood, and now their forward line just got a lot stronger. They will need to prove they can win at the MCG to go all the way, but in terms of list quality, it's hard to go past the Lions for top spot. So that's it, guys. That is my 18 teams ranked 18th to first. And like any good predictions video, I will give you some of my awards. I don't want to go for a gimme grand final of Geelong and Richmond again, which I think is what I did in my December video. I'm going to mix it up this time. I'm going to say 
that the Pies and Lions face off in this year's decider and the Lions surprise everyone by winning on the MCG. So the Lions are gonna be the premiers for 2021 and Hugh McCluggage will be the Norm Smith medalist kicking the winning goal. In terms of a Brownlow medalist, I'm gonna say that Lockie Neal goes back to back, but this time he shares it with Melbourne's Christian Petrarca, while Richmond's Tom Lynch surprisingly bobs up and wins the Coleman. The Coleman is a tough one looking at a lot of those top teams. Any team with a really good key forward pretty much has two really good key forwards that are gonna steal goals from each other. That's also true of Richmond, although Jack Rewalt really is at the end of his career. I'm gonna to say Tom Lynch bobs up and plucks his first Coleman. For the rising star, I'm gonna go with an easy nomination. Matthew Rao has an injury-free season to some extent and wins the rising star by a country mile. That's it, guys. As always, I welcome you to let me know in the comments what you thought of my 2021 predictions. Don't hold back. Give me all the hate you can possibly muster. Let me know what your ladder is going to be and some of your awards as well in the comments. And don't forget to check out our sponsor of today's video, manscaped.com. If you go to their website, you can get their products with 20% off and free shipping if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20. You'll be getting yourself some really great products, but also you'd be helping us support the channel. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys throughout the 2021 AFL season, be it through video, podcasts or of course the infamous true footy live streams we had a short off season but god it still feels like a lifetime thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video cheers